Hey, welcome back. Let's talk about polynomial multiplication, something like 3x to the fourth times 8x squared. These aren't technically polynomials, but we'll get there. This can be a little confusing because you switch back and forth between adding and multiplying. You're code switching a little bit, but technically you're not adding. Let me explain what I mean. If we're taking 3x to the fourth times 8x squared, technically what we're doing is we're taking 3 times x times x times x times x times 8 times x times x. That exponent is not sort of multiplying, it's more appropriately counting. So we're gonna take the numbers, the coefficients that we can handle easily, the three and the eight, and we're gonna go ahead and multiply those. Three times eight is 24. But then we're gonna take the variables, the things we don't know what, can, what they contain yet, the x to the fourth and the x squared. We know there's something in x, we just don't know what it is. And we're gonna take x to the fourth times x squared. And this is where it confuses people because what you do now is you add the exponents. Wait, stop, think of it a different way. You're not adding the exponents, you're counting how many x's there are. x times x times x times x times x times x is a total of x to the sixth. You're not adding, you're counting. Now what's different about this one is that we're asking the seven x cubed to be multiplied times both the two x and the three y. Some of us would call that rainbowing in. And that means we have to do two different multiplications and there'll be the adding slash counting going on in, inside it. So we're gonna take the seven times the two because those are the coefficients and they multiply easily. But then we're gonna take the x times x times x times x and wind up with a total of x to the fourth. That takes care of the first part of the rainbow. Now we'll take care of the second where we'll take the coefficients once again, the seven and the three and we'll multiply those and they multiply easily. And then we'll take the x times x times x and multiply it times the y, well it's a completely different variable, so we're basically gonna have to leave instructions for the next person to say you'll multiply those together as soon as you figure out what's in them. Now we've taken care of the first rainbow and we've taken care of the second rainbow and both of those elements, both of those terms are part of the final answer and they will need to be combined together into a final answer and that's why they would be added at this point to leave instructions for the next person. Once you figure out what's in these variables, put it all together. Now what makes this one difficult and challenging and time consuming is that by taking two x plus three times x squared minus four x plus five, I now have to take everything that's in here times everything that's in here. And if we were rainbowing, that means that we'd be taking the two x times the x squared and the two x times the negative four x and the two x times the five and the three times the x squared and the three times the negative four x and the three times the five. And we wind up with six different answers that all have to be combined at the end. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna highly recommend that you use a method, a, a, a procedure called the lattice method or some people have uh, call it the box method or various other things. All it is, is a structure to help us keep track of all of the things that need to be multiplied. And our box is gonna wind up having three on top and two on the bottom because I have three terms here and two terms here. And I'm gonna put those terms outside their respective sides of the box. Signs matter, keep them straight. What this will do is it will allow us to take the two x times the x squared and the negative four x and the five and to take the three times the x squared and times the negative four x and times the five and get all six of those answers. Here we go. Two times one makes two and x times x squared makes x cubed. Two times negative four makes negative eight and x times x makes x squared. Two times five makes 10 and x times there's no variable there so it's just a one, it's 10 x. Three times x squared is three x squared. Three times negative four x is negative 12 x and three times five is 15. And if everything was set up in standard form and there are no missing terms, then this will be unique, but these will have the same exponent. These will have the same exponent and this will be unique. And when we combine the like terms, we wind up with our answer. Two x cubed from there, and that's taken care of. I don't need to think about it anymore. 3x squared and another negative 8x squared make negative 5x squared, done, done. Negative 12x and 10x make negative 2x, done, done. And 15 is its own animal. There we go. So if you want to succeed at multiplying polynomials, these are the things you should remember. 
First, you are multiplying every term times every term. Remember FOIL? That was just a mnemonic that we had to remind us to take everything times everything. Exponents are really counting how many variables there are to multiply, so that's why you add them rather than multiply them. And if it's going to be at all complicated or big, the lattice or box method is what will keep everything structured and in order.